Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics. In this section, I'm going to relate the Laplace transform to the solution that we found when we apply a square voltage pulse to a low pass filter. Now we know we get this and we worked out this in detail and by doing that we got this solution in two parts here the charging phase and the discharging phase and then we considered that we could write this as a convolution given by this form here that we have two functions we have the function f of t which is our applied voltage square pulse for example and we have this g of t which is the generic exponential decay and by shifting this over when we apply our function here for the voltage this we found to be the answer in other words the answer is the convolution of f of t with g of t where g of t is e to the minus t well i want to look at the Laplace transform and convolution. So this section is R5. So here I replace my voltage battery source here with F of T so I can hit this with the pulse. This is the same arrangement. I simply have this R bent down in that previous diagram because I want to think of this as an RC circuit where the C is the output. We're looking at the charge on the capacitor and with R being equal here to 1 ohm and C equal to 1 farad, then I have this nice simple result. I plus Q is the function F of T. So we have the derivative of Q with respect to T for I plus the Q, and we want to take the Laplace transform of both sides of this equation to see what we get. Well, I'm going to leave the Laplace transform of F of T in this form and just simply call this capital F of S because I want my result to be more general than the specific pulse that I've applied in this problem earlier. So let's do the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. We have here the Laplace transform of the derivative is S times big Q of S minus the initial value for the charge on the capacitor which when we have our filter, the filter is neutral before we hit it with some pulse so we're going to take this to be zero no initial charge. And the Laplace transform of little q is the big Q of S, and the Laplace transform of the little f of t is the big F of S, some general uh, function f of t. Now notice what happens here. I can factor out q of S, have S plus 1, and divide by S plus 1, and I have a wonderful result here. This is incredible. What we have found here is that this second piece here, we look at this second piece, this is the general Laplace transform of e to the at. It's 1 over s minus a. And since I have a plus 1 over here, a has to be negative 1 to get that. So I have this as the Laplace transform of g of t, where I have e to the minus t. And I know that q of s, the answer is a convolution of f of t with g of t. But notice what this is here. This is the product of the big F with the big G. In other words, if you take the Laplace transform of the little q, which is taking the Laplace transform of a convolution, you get the product here of the Laplace transforms of those individual functions, f, little f, and little g. That's an amazing result. So let's write that down here, that the Laplace transform of a convolution, so here's a convolution, that star means convolution, the Laplace transform of the convolution is equal to the product of two Laplace transforms where these Laplace transforms are nothing more than the Laplace transform of the little f and the Laplace transform of the little g. That's amazing. The Laplace transform of a convolution is equal to the product of the Laplace transforms of each of those functions that you're using for the convolution. So we have here regular space and regular space is the convolution and we transform to the Laplace transform space we have a product.
two functions simply multiply together in Laplace transform space while in the regular space you have a convolution of these respective functions in the regular space in other words the little f and the little g you just you can't multiply them here you that wouldn't be correct you have to take the convolution of the two and then you have it and since convolution is commutative you can do this in any order and of course multiplication is commutative so you could multiply these in any order a marvelous result the Laplace transform of a convolution is the product of the Laplace transform of each of those individual functions that you use for your convolution.